Before we get started with today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out to the guys over at SaneSmart and Easel.com. They both generously provided both the machine and the Easel software so that I could use it to make content for you guys. No money change hands, there's no affiliate links, I'm not trying to get paid, but it was incredibly generous of them to provide the machine so that I didn't have to come out of pocket to make content for you guys. So that's that, let's get going. I'm out in the shop and I'm standing in front of our Akuma M560. It's a Japanese made 18,000 pound behemoth of a uh, three axis vertical machining center. It's a three axis CNC mill and I absolutely love the machine. It's fast, it's accurate, it's rigid, it's incredibly repeatable. It is kind of like, uh, it's everything you want in an industrial grade uh, vertical machining center. And I learned the basics, like I learned this, the basic strategies, the basic principles of how machines like this Akuma worked about 13 years ago, and I did it using a machine just like that. That's a Sane Smart 3020 Pro Ultra desktop CNC router, and it's capable, it's kind of designed for cutting wood and carving plastic and things like that. And if you're really careful and you know what you're doing, you can cut aluminum slowly but it can do it and what i love about little machines like the sane smart are that they not only can make cool things you can make cool signs and keychains and just whatever your mind can dream up but they also teach you the skills or they lay the foundation so that one day if you do want to buy yourself an akuma or you want to buy yourself a haas mini mill or whatever you've already been exposed to all of the kind of the procedures like setting your work offset, which is your XYZ home, setting your tool length offset, which is when you touch the little probe that is provided with the machine. And then of course, optimizing the feeds and speeds with the end mill or the router bit that you choose for cutting whichever material you have. If you start cutting something and you break the bit right away, well then you overdid it. You went too fast and you're probably need, gonna need to slow it down. And the rules are very similar in a machine like the Akuma. If I grab a half inch end mill and I go to cut a piece of 4140 tool steel and I go too fast or I take too big of a cut, it'll just break the end mill. Just like the Saint Smart can on a tiny little piece of wood or plastic. So I love the fact that so many of these companies are offering little CNC, like little desktop CNC machines. I love it because they allow you guys to make things that are really cool, but I love it even more because when you play with them on the desktop, you don't realize that you're learning the same, you don't realize that you really are learning the same skills that are needed to run industrial level CNC machines with far less consequences. I can tell you that when I got my first CNC machine, my little 6040 CNC router, like, I don't know, 12 or 13 years ago or whatever it was, I crashed that thing six ways from Sunday. I, I smashed it in Z, I, would, I had it plowing through aluminum with six or seven millimeter bits that it had no business even attempting. I took depths of cut, I was just totally winging it. I had no idea that things like FS Wizard Pro or that G Wizard Calculator, I had no idea that some of these other tools were out there I didn't realize that companies like Easel and others have recommended feeds and speeds based on the cutter and the material you're choosing. If you love to make stuff, and maybe you've already kind of got a taste of making stuff with a 3D printer, and you think that maybe the next step for you is a CNC machine, well, it's probably pretty obvious that spending 150 grand or whatever these things cost for an industrial machine, that, that's not the next step. The next step is something like the little 3020 here that can go on your desktop where you can make stuff, have fun. There's a much lower risk both financially and of course physically. These big powerful industrial mills, they are literally, they can threaten your life if you're not careful. You have to be incredibly, uh, you have to be incredibly cautious and follow the appropriate safety procedures when you're operating one. 
because they're, they're powerful. When you have a desktop CNC, there are dangers. You need to wear safety glasses. And if you're cutting carbon fiber or fiberglass, you need breathing equipment, a respirator. You don't want to breathe that stuff in. But the fact is, these desktop CNC machines are an amazing bang for the buck, not only because of what they can make, but because of the skills that they teach you that you carry on forward in life. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. Stay tuned because we've made a little connecting rod. We've got a whole little series going on these desktop CNC machines because I really feel like getting you guys into these, showing you how to optimize them, it really puts everybody in a position to be able to grow from there. And I think that's a great spot to be in. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Well, man, you made it all the way to the end and that's saying something. I know my videos aren't always the easiest to watch, but I did my very best to kind of demonstrate to you guys that you really can start with something like a desktop CNC. And you can, if you do your due diligence and you learn the protocols and the procedures you learn the formulas of how to calculate feeds and speeds. The same concepts apply at an industrial level that can be learned and implemented right on a SaneSmart 3020 Pro Ultra. Hope you guys enjoyed this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. Be on the lookout because I've already got all the footage already on my hard drive for a work holding video and a tool pathing video. So, there are more videos coming, I assure you. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.